Yo, what's up, everybody? I hope you're doing well out there. It's your boy, Khoi, back again with another video. I hope you are surrounded by people whom you love. You're in a good place. You have food. You have a roof over your head. Whatever, all that good stuff. I just want to take you guys for a trip down the memory lane and especially into my childhood. What was it like growing up in Vietnam? What was it like learning English for the first time and coming into this foreign land and finally being able to make these videos today? I'll take you down um, the memory lane and show you what my childhood was like. So as a child, as a young boy in Vietnam, growing up, I've always had this idea being drilled down into me that one day I need to study abroad, learn English and that's our idea of success. In my family, we have always had this bias against our own people. My mom is always telling me, oh, these people from these English speaking countries, they are better than us. They are more civilized. They are more polite. They are nicer people. They have better morals. They are more civilized. That's the sort of things I grew up listening to. My parents especially my mom saying one day you're gonna study abroad and you're gonna bring us with you imagine as a young boy growing up in southern vietnam after the war after the north has taken over the country i don't want to get too political but hearing that hearing that our country ain't shit hearing that other countries are better than us hearing that any other country to live in is much better than where we are imagine what would that do to a young mind, insecurity, shame, low self-esteem, no pride, loss of culture. Hearing that makes me want to abandon my own culture. After all, we ain't shit. We are inferior to other races. Imagine as a young child hearing that. Imagine as a young child in the Western world hearing that. Oh, this country is in ruin. Our people are turning into degenerates. Society is falling apart. Whatever you do, you must leave the West. Imagine hearing that as a young child growing up in a Western country. What would that do to you? Personally, when I hear my mom saying that over and over again, I started to form a little bit of a bias myself. I started thinking, hmm, maybe I ain't shit. Maybe I'll grow up to be nothing. Maybe the white people will always be better than us. Maybe our people are inferior. After all, that's what I've been hearing. After all, that's what my parents have been telling me. I don't want this video to be a criticism of my mom or my dad. No, because I owe everything to them. I am here today because of them. So I don't want this video to be an attack on them or anything like that. I'm just saying, this is my experience. This is how I view my life. As a child, I was always very combative when it comes to learning English. The first time that my parents took me to one of these language school, by the way, in Vietnam, we have these things called language school where parents normally send their kids to um, these classes after the school finishes or maybe on the weekends to learn English. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same in other countries. They also have these language centers. But yeah, my parents, they wanted to sign me up for English classes. And I remember the first day that they took me to one of these centers. I threw a big tantrum. I cried. I made a big scene. So much so that the security guard has to get up from his chair <laughs> and walk down the stairs to my parents. who were trying their best to push me up the, the stairs. And he just asked my parents, what's wrong? What's happening? My parents just straight up told him, nothing we're just trying to get our kid to go up to the counter so then we can register him and sign him up for classes and he's just throwing a big tantrum um yeah eventually they forced me to learn english <laughs> at one of these centers and i can tell you the experience was not enjoyable at all it was always a chore my mom, every time after class, she would tell me, you need to be practicing English. You need to be listening to your CDs. 
You need to practice writing, practice listening. You got to be watching these channels. English is very important. Yeah, so it was hard for me to learn English. I'll be honest. And the first time that I came to Australia, I remember feeling so segregated. You know, in primary school we had this thing called ESL, which is like a special program for kids from diverse backgrounds who might not speak English at home. English as a second language, ESL. So I was in this program along with maybe four other kids, just five kids in our year group, and I felt so <laughs> I don't know discriminated. Against because in primary school they also had this thing called special education, which is for kids with learning disabilities, autism,、um, kids who are disruptive in class. They also get sent to special ed. I feel like we are in a similar program, but under a different name. Every time that I go to These ESL classes, I've always experienced some sort of differential treatment from my homeroom teacher. Oh, he he's just just going down to that ESL class again. All right, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, and the first few years being in Australia was hard. I didn't understand the slang that the Australian crowds use. They have their own version of English as well, so it was hard.、Uh, many times, people would be cracking a joke, and I couldn't understand. All my friends, they'll be laughing, and I'll I'll just stand there, <laughs> not knowing what to say. And we we were generally treated as clowns.、Um, <laughs> we were funny, apparently, the ESL kids, because we couldn't speak English. And people they laugh at us.、Um, I thought I was being funny, but now thinking back about it, they were probably laughing at me rather than laughing with me. And this took me back to my earlier years studying in one of these language school back in Vietnam. I remember there was one teacher, and I can remember him so vividly. He rocked up to class. Uh, and introduce himself as big dog. That's right, big dog. A white teacher coming into our class, and his name is Big Dog, and that's how I remember him. And I feel like it was a joke, and everybody took it <laughs> seriously. He's probably one of those backpackers, expats type of guy who travels to Vietnam for fun. And thought, hmm, maybe it would be cool if I try to be an English teacher and teach these dumb kids in the village. <laughs> and I'm gonna call myself Big Dog. When white people come to my country and pretend or try to speak our language, they were revered. They were seen as gods. They were worshipped.、Um, Yeah, they were really respected. Our people loved them, but when we, a filthy immigrant, come to this country, and try to speak the language, we get made fun of. Some of us gave up, never achieving our full potential of the language. We will always have this funny accent. People will always remind us that we are not from here. That's been my experience, anyways.、Um, but I do have it much better than some other guys, and I do feel a lot for my brothers and sisters out there who might have come from a different background and came into an English-speaking country.、Um, yeah, I feel for you guys. But remember, you are not alone, and do not give up. Just keep learning the language, keep learning the culture, and respect the culture. That's all I can say. You are in a foreign land, so try to learn their culture. 
Um, that's all. That's all I got to say for today. Hope you're doing well out there. Stay strong. God bless. And I'll speak to you next time. Peace.